questions? Questions and, of course, uh, interventions, commentaries. No question. It seems that nobody wants to intervene. Uh, that's it. No You've discussed before that um, in order to find a solution for an issue or a problem, you have to turn it around. But sometimes it's very difficult, especially through international cooperation or relations, to view the other side problem and then turn it around. <clears throat> so do you have any suggestions or other things that would help to do so from the other point? I, I think you uh, nailed it because that's the most difficult. I don't have myself any solution uh, pre-cooked, but I ask you to uh, think that there's always two sides and there's always a good uh, uh, part in every bad situation and a bad part in every good situation. And if through dialogue you can uh, determine where the other person comes from, what their mindset is, what whether they have uh, through their culture decided that they live in a universe of fear or in a universe of friendliness. And little by little, you unveil and take out layer by layer through empathy, through uh, uh, understanding, through putting yourself in the other person's shoes, and through, as Dan uh, suggested, through reading the fundamental uh, culture building blocks of one mindset. And you know what's fascinating in the diaspora world is that we're living in a world now of overlapping identities. People are no longer, I don't know where you are from. Where are you from? Egypt? Egypt and live in, study in Berlin. Right, so you you have one Egyptian layer of Arab culture and one German layer and one European layer and one American school system because the school was bears the mark of its creator. You know, you you say that organizations are 90 percent, and this is statistic, up to 90 percent the mindset of their founders. Founder. You know, look at the Apple. I mean, look at every good entrepreneurial company and you'll see the marks of the founder and the mark, that's culture. And so when you get to the fundamental building blocks of one mindset, you can work with it and you see it in the small things. You see it in language. If you train your year, you see uh, people talking very negatively or being very pessimistic or saying always, answering always no first. You know, you answer a question, I don't want this to happen rather than being positive and saying I want this to turn. So you little by little build up your antennas. And it's a game, it's a fascinating game. It's a fascinating field you're in because it's a growth industry. The world needs decoders, you know? And your decoding um, device is your intelligence, your culture, your intuition, and your empathy your love of people, your love to make them feel safe and happy and understood. And in order to get to that, you 
be the one who first exert love and understanding and listening, as Mark, uh, as Mark said. Be the one to give uh, attention first. Be the one to give love and understanding and empathy, and you'll receive. Be the one to give respect and you'll receive it back. And on that basis, you can build. But there's no recipe. That's what's fun about it. Because if, it could, uh, if you could take a pill to solve it, what, where would be the fun, right? Maybe someone else has I'd a better answer. Like well, no, not, another, a complimentary answer, not right. a better answer, I'm sure. Uh, great question. My answer to that would be, and it's a, not an easy thing to do, is to accept that there's always a truth in the other person's point of view. And when I mentioned very briefly that our culture today is really an analytic culture, one of the characteristics of our current culture is we're taught to think in terms of this is right and something else is wrong. And the truth is never that easy, especially in human affairs. There's always multiple points of view. And when we divide reality, we tend to look at it from one point of view. And uh, if we can learn, there's a very interesting book you might like, uh, a man named William Byers. He's a Canadian mathematician. It's called Deep Thinking. And he says, all creative thinking, all thinking that gets us out of the limitations of the present, starts by embracing things that seem to be opposite, mutually exclusive contradictions, and discovering a reality of which they are actually a greater part, a whole with which they are a greater part. And the, the, one of the great things about the book is he emphasizes how, how much we resist in embracing contradictions, because it creates a tension, it creates a lack of resolution. We want to know what's right. We want to find a path of certainty. And this always involves embracing the uncertainty and the tensions involved in accepting there's more than one part of the, there's more than one element of the truth, there's more than one right answer. And there must be some way that we can reconcile them at a higher level. Great question. Other questions, yes. That's a, a great question. It's a challenging project which we're trying to work on. I mentioned that I've lived in India for many years and I work with lots of young people of your age or a little older, bright, educated young people who have become more westernized and more American than I am. Uh, because the educational system has been so much dictated by looking to the West that they've given up their own cultural roots. I don't know the simple answer to this unless the society and the educators themselves recognize we live at a particular moment in time. We look back on what happened 500 years ago and we wonder how could people have been so superstitious or so ignorant by focusing on some things and ignoring the values of science and technology and, uh, and, and, and experimental evidence and so forth. I'm sure that the time is going to come, maybe not too long from now, where people are going to look back on us the same way. How do we get that, how do we get out of what works today and look at greater truths? For the individual, of course, it can be a lifetime path, but you're asking very rightly, how can the educational system do that? 
in our organization, we are asking that question. We are bringing together people and really look, trying to look at the problems we have today. Everybody rightfully looks at education as the solution to the problems, uh, which is true. We need more of it. But we're also trying to look at the other side and see how our present educational system in precipitates or ex exaggerates the problems by the way we're, we're doing it. That's a project for the society. Uh, learning your own culture, of course, the cultural heritage is one obvious part of that. Learning the cultures of as many different periods and many different places in the world is enough, is another, and learning to be tolerant about them. But still, if we learn them from the perspective of the prevailing culture, we're still going to be dividing and analyzing and categorizing reality according to the classifications that are current today. So it's, I mentioned William Byers a few minutes ago. He says, the one really difficult thing for us to do is to realize that we're, all our thinking is within a paradigm. And to, we can't even see the paradigm. How do we get out of it? So I'm repeating what I said a few minutes ago. When we see our paradigm clashes with reality, global warming, poverty, war, uh, nuclear weapons, uh, uh, our inequality are all indications, are all symptoms of the fact that our view of the world is clashing with the reality of the world. That's a way, if we embrace that and we realize there's something missing, there's something more we need, that's the first step to getting out of it. But great, great question. Uh, unfortunately, I think that our young uh, colleagues have to go to the main Ministry of Foreign Affairs in, uh, to start from here, from outside in uh, 10 minutes. That's why I propose to thank to all the uh, persons who intervened today. Organize, what not easy to organize uh, this uh, conference and especially uh, the next uh, trip for the delegation from the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy. Let me to thanks also to uh, Adina Bara, uh, Alina Stan from uh, Romanian Foundation for Democracy, uh, Christovic Lady from Bucharest University, and uh, Madalina Miu from uh, uh, Institute of Cultural Diplomacy in Berlin. And applause.